So you may be asking yourself, damn, I'm really ass at BR. I want to just go 12 and 0, just please, just once in my life. And I'm going to help you out with lineup construction and how to draft, which is one of the most important parts of BR, believe it or not. Now, before we start the video and the draft, I appreciate you guys if you would like the video, if you enjoy the content, and subscribe to the channel for more MLB The Show related content. So let's get on to this. So with this draft right here, this is actually pretty good draft right now. We got Corey Seager and Grady Sizemore. My number one tip for BR players that are new or just experienced players, but they just cannot get over the hump. You need to focus like it's an MLB IRL draft. And that means you need to focus on center fielders and shortstops, which is why I said this is a pretty good draft to start off. Preferably in these positions, you want the better defensive outfielder. So in this case, we're going to go with Grady Sizemore because he can play all the outfields, he's fast, and he has good power. Now in this round, we have pretty much just, it's a no brainer. You want guys with a whole bunch of power, That's all you want. So in this case, we're gonna use Hunter Renfro. Now in this round, besides if you're trying to do BR missions, which I believe these are BR cards, like I said before, you want guys with power. That's all you care about in BR, speed and power. And none of these guys bring that to the table. So we're gonna look at a guy like Melanson. And you see his primary pitch is a cutter. For pitchers, you want cutters and sinkers. <laughs> that's not, that's all it's gonna matter because All-Star is a joke and it's very easy to get hit. Now this round is pretty meh to me. In this year, since there's a huge problem with pitcher stamina and that relievers get tired before they even come into the game, we're going to need more starters with velocity and stamina. The best pick in this situation is Bob Feller, even though he's really hittable, but it could be worse. This pick right here, it really depends on how you feel about lefty righty matchups. If you really feel comfortable hitting lefty lefty or pitching lefty righty, we have a starting pitcher, a left hander, a power hitting catcher, and a power hitting left fielder. Get the left handers as soon as possible. If they're decent, just get them. Now, this diamond round is pretty ass. I'm not gonna lie. But like I said before, we want guys with a ton of power and whoever has the most power is what we're going with. So we're going with Troy Gloss. Bronze rounds, in my opinion, guys, you either go with the glitchy power hitting bats or you just go with the starter. In this case, we're gonna go with Matt Manning since he has five pitches. This round, we can use Josh Bell. It's pretty much Josh Bell, there's no one else. Like, like I said before, we don't want guys with low power. They're just, they're just useless. And Urquidy has no pitch differentials, pretty much. He's just fastball and breaking ball. And Kella is just ass. We're gonna go with the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. Eric Fetty is a very glitchy pitcher. As you see here, like I said before, meta pitches, sinker, cutter, slurve. He has everything you want. Do not worry about hits per nine in BR. It does not matter. Now, we got very fortunate and we got a supercharged card in a round. So <laughs> pretty much just pick that guy. It does not matter. It's a bronze and you have a 90 overall. Now this round kind of sucks. So my rule of thumb, a lot of people don't like to go with this philosophy. I go with the best starting pitcher. Montas is okay, you know, but he has decent stamina. Seawall is very hittable and these guys have no power whatsoever. Pena is okay, but a, a rule of thumb I have, do not get defensive catchers. Defense as a catcher does not matter in BR. It really doesn't. It's home or a bus, unfortunately. <laughs> like I said before, another supercharged card should don't say no to these. Here's a situation where you need to have experience with cards because JP Crawford always has a good swing. A lot of people I know like Carson Kelly and Romano actually has a pretty good motion. If someone has a good motion, it kind of overrides their pitch selection, honestly. You're going to pitch maybe one inning with them or just three batters. I'm going Roman. This is another situation where we have pretty much nothing, but we have a decent starter. We have Dakota Hudson who has a sinker slider and a circle change, so we're gonna go with him. Now, before I make this next pick, <laughs> I know this supercharged, but before I make this next pick, we have all righties. Do not worry about it. We're trying to score. You're not going to pitch. I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna be able to pitch in BR. I went 12 and 0 six times and then will be 20. I had a 10 ERA. I'm not kidding you. I would still go Javi anyways, cause like I said before at the beginning of the video, we want defense from shortstop and center field. And Javi brings both of those things to us. Now common rounds in previous years, it was just the starters. But since the stamina issue is so bad, I like to have good starters, at least two or three. 
So in this situation, we could burn off a reliever. Worst case, just go with the left-hander. Just want to go with the left-hander in this case. So same thing here where you're not really going to use any of these guys. You could go AJ Puck, but same thing with this round. We have comments and we're just like, ugh. AJ Puck is pretty much the only option. I like to use bench bats or speed. None of these guys provide that. And Puck is a lefty in case we need it. Now, this is a good draft for pitchers because now we have Crandall Graveman, Aaron Loop. I'm going to go with Loop, but Graveman's really good. So in my opinion, you should go with Loop. Now, once again, we didn't get really much for catchers. There's no defense, there's no power. Torrance is okay. He has good power against lefties, but that's about it. So we're gonna go with the righty reliever because we need more. And you want to get guys with five pitches if you can, and it will do just fine. Like I said before, don't worry about hit run. This round, we're going to go with Swarzak. And you may say, why would I do that? But the catcher options is just not good. I don't trust Castro against the lefty. He could be a backup catcher, but you don't really need that. So I'm going to go with Schwartz that because if I go with Alvarez, I'm gonna have five lefties, which is a huge issue. So we're gonna go with Schwartz. For this round, there's all catchers. So we're kind of screwed into picking one. So we got Roberto Perez early in the draft. So we're just gonna pick him. This situation, how I like to organize my bench. You want one hitter that can hit very well against righties one hitter that can do very well against lefties another hitter that can do pretty well against both sides and you want a speed guy and and a defensive replacement and our power hitting righty Mbizio. now we need a guy that can hit lefties so we're gonna go with kyle former this round once again we have someone that can hit both you could get conforto or we can get adamas it's really up to you honestly i honestly like conforto more in br than adamas this is the either or pick for you guys I'm going with Conforto. And like I said before, you want guys that can hit both sides of the plate. This is a very obvious pick. It's Luke Voigt. Actually, now before I made a take on this, I was like, oh, Luke Voigt's the obvious pick. But then I looked at Sam Hillier and I'm like, holy crap, they juiced the hell out of his power versus lefties. Depending on what you need on the bench. So you see my lineup. I have a whole bunch of righties, right? So if I put another one in, then I'll be I'll be kind of ass out of luck. I'm going with Sam Hillier and I'm going to work around the lineup with that. And this last pick, this is pretty much preference. You can go with Bellinger for the defense or just uh, utility. A lot of people like to go with utility. I just like to go with power. That, that's the common trend. Now, since we finished our draft, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your lineup. We are pretty much in an issue where we have a lot of supercharged cards, which never happened to me, right? Generally speaking, in your lineup, you want your leadoff hitter to be very good against right-handed pitchers. Why? Because most people are going to start off games with righties. There are more righties in real life than there are lefties. We're going to need someone out of the leadoff spot that can hit really well against righties. In this case, we're going to have Seth Beer's supercharge card where he absolutely dominates against righties. A common trend you're going to see here is that I want every single batter to protect themselves in the lineup. What I mean by that is that we have the left-handed hitting Seth Beer, who matches against righties. Now we have Renfro, who matches against lefties. Behind the lefty mashing Renfro, we have Sizemore. If you face against the Goon in BR, they are not going to open with lefties. People are going to hold on their left-handed relievers for as long as they can, or they'll be the first guys to come out of the bullpen to lefty reliever if they open with a right-hander. What this means is that the middle of our order, four, five, six, we can put guys that are better against lefties. Now, Brandon Lau is not better against lefties, but he can hold himself. So in case there's a lefty-lefty situation, or they throw in another righty, what we can just do is that we still have the advantage because we have two of our best hitters, righty-righty. The eight hitter, you want a power hitting anyway. Like you need a power hitter at the eighth spot. Why? Because if you're cooking in the first inning and you're the road team and there's two outs, bases loaded, or second and third, you do not want your pitcher to hit the man on the bases. You just don't. Eight hitter to pretty much act like your second cleanup. Finish the inning with a whole bunch of runs, or he's the one that ends the inning on an out. You do not want to be in a situation where someone intentionally walks the eight hole hitter to face the pitcher. It's a pain in the ass, I know, but that's just how it is. Now, in most cases, I wouldn't have four lefties in my bench. The, the draft kind of went that way because I got so many supercharged cards, which kind of sucks. Ezio does decent against lefties. Farmer can hit both sides if you really need him to. And Hilliard's nasty, so he'll probably be like the first guy I use off the bench. Bullpen-wise, honestly, I just go with Field, to be honest with you. 
just go with your main guys you trust with. It, it BR is such a subjective mode that you just want to go with the guys you're good with and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. You pick the meta pitches, you spam those pitches over and over again. I will do another video on in-game tips. But if this video gets 10 likes, I will do that in the future. But anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you guys later. Now we need a guy to protect the number two guy. And now we have someone that can protect Renfro, who can match both. Fuck. So now we have, fuck. We have the right hand and the common trend you're going to see in this lineup. Every single batter in this lineup can protect themselves and protect each other. Think of it as like, like the little friends on little hands, right?